You know how a place reminds you about a part of your life? Whenever I go up to the North Woods of Wisconsin, it brings me back to my childhood and early teens. The time I spent up there at summer camp, running through the humidity with mosquitoes and ticks, taking cover from a huge thunderstorm, and enjoying the cool nights, fresh breeze, and smell of pine in the air. Based on my past experience in the area, when Dave Shlubowski posted the Wisconsin Waterfalls Loop last year, I knew a trip to the North Woods was in order. The North Woods Waterfalls Route is a 380-mile loop that meanders its way through the North Woods of Wisconsin and parts of Michigan, traveling on dirt roads, two-track, snowmo trails, single track, and pavement, traveling to waterfalls, local establishments, past mines, current logging operations, and next to Lake Superior a few times. Joining me on this trip was two friends I met while living in Minneapolis, Eric Dabbert aboard his Moots Baxter and Jesse Ramsey aboard his Thai Fargo while I was pedaling the new Moots Route ESC. We had five days to cover as much ground as we possibly could, and while that sounds like plenty of time to cover 380 miles, as it goes, things didn't necessarily go as planned. But what did was plenty of miles and smiles. We started at a friend's cabin, so our route was a bit different than starting in Cable. And we also went counterclockwise, which ended up helping us when we had to bail on day four. We decided early May was the smart move because we wanted to avoid the bugs. Simply put, this zone is buggy in the summer. The biting flies and mosquitoes are relentless, but going early meant we would be dealing with a very active tick season. Another upside was the peace and quiet. Every waterfall we saw, we had to ourselves. It was also so early that some services happened to be closed, so if you do go this early, that is something to keep in mind. As we started day one, spring was in the air. It was a later spring for the area as winter dragged on, but mid-60s with a bit of humidity felt great. The leaves showcased a young, bright green hue, and the canopies still relatively thin, you could see deep into the forest, which showcased wildflowers and wildlife. Our first waterfall of the trip was Morgan Falls, a thin yet very tall fall tucked away 1.5 miles off route. Much of the route has the mileage to the falls accounted for, so skipping one or two would certainly cut down on your total mileage. And we did that from time to time, especially over the first two days where there was an abundance of falls. As we meandered from waterfall to waterfall on day one, I was reminded why I love it up here. Well, not all was sunshine and rainbows, especially due to some questionable snowmo trails and tick-laden grass. It's part of the adventure, and where there was tough stretches, there were beautiful vistas to compensate. And that is the theme of much of this route. Nothing is too challenging for the reward. We saw a lot of really beautiful waterfalls. Taylor Fork Falls, Rouse Falls, which I think was my favorite, Foster Falls, which was a big set of rapids that we hung out at for a while, Willard Falls, and finally Upper and Lower Potato River Falls. Our goal was to make it to the Potato River Falls campground on day one. We stumbled our way in after roughly 60 miles and a full day of riding, just as a huge thunderstorm would blast the area with high winds and a lot of rain. It passed and the sun greeted us. Day one was perfect. We woke to a gray, cool, and damp world, which is not at all uncommon for this part of the world. After leaving camp, we endured maybe the most sporty bit of riding we found all trip. A nice excuse to wash our feet before arriving to the small town of Cedar to reload on fuel. We inched our way closer to the big lake that is known as Gitchigumi. And we knew this as the temperature would plummet the closer we got. Gitchigumi, or Lake Superior, is the largest freshwater lake by surface area in the world. 
It holds 10% of the world's fresh water, and it's a sight to behold. On this particular day, it was showcasing quite a bit of attitude. Superior has a draw unlike any other body of water I've visited, and each time I visit, I'm amazed. Hey. We would check out Superior Falls before we would bid the big lake farewell and head southward for the rest of the day. As morning turned to afternoon and the miles added up, Jesse took a turn, or let's say his stomach did. He kept talking about it, but it wasn't until he threw up on the corner of the road did I realize he was in a bad spot. The goal was to get to Ironwood and reassess. <laughs> There are a lot of small towns along the route. Even the southernmost portion of the route has services, so you can almost always plan on getting a hot meal or at least some convenience store food each day. But Ironwood, which actually happens to be in Michigan, is the largest town en route. As we limped our way into town, we went straight to Stormy Cromer, a textile manufacturer mostly known for their unique hats. Eric and I went into shop for hats while Jesse took a breather under a tree. We ran into Bob, the owner of Stormy Cromer, who's a super nice guy. I encourage everyone to visit Stormy Cromer and get a hat. They worked really well for our trip when we got to camp and they packed down really well. We found a great barbecue spot downtown Ironwood and made a plan. Jesse needed some time. He needed a bed, and so the plan was to reconnect with him once he got some shut-eye. Eric and I punched out some fast miles after spending a few hours in Ironwood. We made some good time to Island Lake, and the plan was to grab a bite at Willie Stills, a fun-looking bar but it happened to be closed. We continued on looking for a decent camp spot, but nothing really jumped out to us. As the clouds grew darker, the sky unleashed quickly on us. As we pedaled in the rain, we thought how perfect everything fell into place the day before and how different today had panned out. Lucky for us, we spotted a nice small established campsite that was just outside of the town of Glidden. It continued to rain as we got camp ready, so we quickly boiled water, threw it in our dehydrated meals, and hung out in our tents the rest of the night. I got a double shot of coffee. I got a double shot of coffee. Nature Valley. And uh, what did I have? Oh, I had a Pop-Tart. We woke to more rain, but also a message from Jesse telling us that he would meet us in Glidden. We were stoked. We packed up our gear in between rain events and got rolling to meet back up with Jesse and to get some convenience store breakfast, of course. The band was back together and it sure felt great. Breakfast sausage wrapped in some fried casing. Only, only in Wisconsin. <laughs> The majority of the day was spent meandering our way through the Schwamigan National Forest, and at times it felt like we were in the middle of nowhere. We pedaled, stopped, chatted, watched nature, swatted bugs, and pedaled some more. It was a reminder of the simplicity of bike travel and how incredibly refreshing it is to escape the grind and enjoy time outside with friends. We would eventually hit the Camba Trail System, the lone bit of single track en route. I've pedaled up here before and the riding is fantastic. It was still early season, so there was a lot of downed trees and there was also a bunch of logging operations going on. And of course, some excitement. I really thought you said I broke my bone. What happened? <laughs> Shipped it right off. But we would eventually make our way into Cable. And our first stop, of course, is the River's Eatery for some pizza before making our way to the Drummond Woods B&B, a really awesome lodging option if you're looking to stay in Cable. Jan and Jerry are two wonderful human beings. We decided day four would be our final day. We had to cover some pretty big mileage over the next two days to complete the route, and we weren't necessarily in that mindset. 
So our new plan was to leave Cable, head to Delta Diner, enjoy lunch, and head back to our start point. We realized if you really want to make the most of this route, give yourself plenty of time. Six days is a minimum. There's so much to see and do on this route, you're doing yourself a disservice by hammering out the miles. We got rolling after sleeping in the warmth that night, and we were just giddy all morning, excited for the deliciousness that is Delta Diner. The roads leading to Delta were well graded and rolling. They were some of my favorite of the trip. This would be my first time there, but Eric had been there a few times prior, and he had told us that we were in for a treat. Once we hit Delta, missing the diner was impossible. It looks the part, but offers something truly special inside. But don't expect to just sit down and enjoy a cup of coffee. There is guaranteed a wait, unless you go early enough, so plan ahead. We waited about 40 minutes, but it was well worth it. That's all I want to say. You have to experience it yourself, but Delta Diner is one of many reasons to head to the North Woods and ride this route. From there, we made our own route back to our start location, which was a collection of dirt and paved back roads. It always sucks to end a trip, but we had a night to decompress and talk about the beauty of the waterfall's loop, despite not finishing at all. The North Woods. Once you have the North Woods in your blood, it has a certain draw that keeps you coming back for more. From my childhood to when it started, to my mid-30s now, the North Woods holds a big space in my heart. I wasn't sure what to do with my hands. Oh, sorry. That was a video.